So here we are at the start of the Beckles Flotilla to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. One of the vessels taking part is the Big Dog Ferry, which is now owned and run by the Beckles Lido. Before we embarked on our voyage, I had a quick word with Carl, who's one of the skippers, and asked him what the Big Dog Ferry was all about and what it was like to take part in such an important event. That's uh, quite an exciting experience. You know, I'm getting a few good, uh, butterflies about it at the moment. You know, we haven't actually started officially yet. We start Wednesday this week. We've got like, a big launch from uh, the trees and stuff coming down. The mayor, I think, is, is due to come and help us launch. So this morning on the way down here, we, uh, we spotted uh, marsh harrier, uh, two kingfishers, and numerous herons young herons as well, who are not too scared at the moment, so you can get quite close to them. It's a 1955 aluminium ship's lifeboat, and uh, that's, that's been in service as a ferry on this river now for six years. Me and uh, friend Paul, the other skipper, we took it over this year just for the Beckles Lido. Uh, they're up there. They own the boat, and, uh, and we're running it for them. We leave here uh, on the odd hours, from 11 o'clock in the morning, right the way through, we leave the locks on the even hours, coming back, and we'll carry on going as long as there's daylight in the sky. We now board the Big Dog Ferry to take part in this flotilla, heading down towards the quay with many other boats, such as steamboats, the sea cadets, and also many other private individuals who had decorated their boats quite cheerfully with flags and bunting, some even had handheld air horns. <coughs> Residents who lived on the riverbank came out to watch us as we sailed on past. Some waving their flags, cheering and clapping as we moved towards the quay. The last two words on this sign were used quite excessively. <coughs> Stores charity, the Waveney Stardust, played an important role today as she was ferrying about Peter Aldis, who's the Waveney MP, along with the town's mayor. Following on behind the Waveney Stardust is also another very important vessel, the Beckles Lifeboat, which is manned by volunteers. This was also followed by many other smaller private craft, some even as old as to be steam powered. But down at the quay was where most of the entertainment was being held, along with live music, and even the odd teddy bear got involved. I then caught up with the mayor, Graham Catchpole, and I asked him what started this event. When there was a question asked at the town council as to whether the town was going to do anything for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, um, and the council decided yes they should, so they decided on a budget, contributed some money to it. Uh, one councillor, Eric Brown, volunteered to head the uh, subcommittee up to organise things. He then got Beckel Seeker Dennis involved, um, and the whole thing took off from there. I also asked him what he feels about the Jubilee events taking place not just locally, but globally. Well, I, well, it is, the, it is a, a nationwide uh, thing, isn't it? We all do our small bit to uh, to make the whole thing work uh, as a nation, so it's, uh, it's nice to be a part of it, yes. Waveney MP Peter Aldis made an appearance and was one of the guests on board the Waveney Stardust. I asked him what it was like to take part in such an event. Well, I think the thing we often forget is this is a, this is a once in a lifetime experience for, for an awful lot of us. The last Jubilee was well, well over 100 years ago in the last late part of the 19th century. This is a one-off experience um, and it's a very special event to have taken part in. in the way in an understated British way, we really get everyone's really getting stuck into it, really enjoying it, and you're seeing Beckles in it, all its all its glory today. You know, as I came came into the in, into the sort of harbour here, it was a really special scene, and it's great to see so many people participating and enjoying themselves. And luckily, the weather has, has a strong favour for us. 
also asked Peter whether these ceremonial events should be held more often in local communities. Well, I think I think the key the key thing. I don't think you should just do things for the sake of it. There's got to be a very special reason for doing it, and it's things like like coronations, um, like um, silver jubilees that we had back in 1977, which I was fortunate enough to be able to remember and take part in that. And this is a special event. I think it is for special events that we Britain best comes together. And, well, we take them when they come. Horse and carriage rides have taken place at the town centre. I spoke to Julia with her horse, Benjamin, to find out what it was like to be part of this event. Yeah, it feels really good. We've, um, this is the first time this um, horse and carriage has been licensed in a few years, frankly. So um, they're quite proud of that. And they're just going to see how we go. Yeah, it's been a good week to start. We're doing carriage rides and we start at the quay and we go up to the town. And then we can drop off at the town or we can do a round trip that brings you back to the quay. We also do private rides and things like that, picnic days, weddings, proms. So we do it everything. So it's not just here. So you've heard it from the horse's mouth. Ben and Julia operate as N and J horse-drawn carriages and can be hired for private events. I also met up with David from the Royal British Legion. I asked him how he feels about taking part in this event. I think it's something which uh, I'm glad it's happened in my lifetime. I don't think it will be you know, 100 years before or more before that was again. Um, locally, I think it has brought the town out. In town, we always find that the town people are very uh, successful in supporting the events, and I think there ought to be more. And um, now, obviously, you said this sort of thing brings the community together. Do you reckon it's something that should be happening all the time to celebrate most things, not just anything to do with the monarchy, but? national holidays in general? I think it should do, yes. I think uh, there are various um, things that goes on from year to year, which as British people we should be a bit more of a celebration of, bring people together. That's what's lacking today. I mean, when I was a youngster, there was a lot more community spirit than where there isn't today. So these things I then spoke with the event organiser and I asked her how many boats actually took part in this flotilla. I don't know there was a lot. I would say there was probably about 50 boats in the little boats. So it's really, and this waving stardust, which was brilliant. So. Okay. Um, do you reckon these sort of community events should happen more often? Yes, definitely. But you need more volunteers to do it. But even as the sun went down, people were still in the party mood and still waving their flags. Most of the crowd are now making their way down to the beacon, which will now be lit. So let's go down to the countdown. So just like many others, the Beckles Beacon has been lit to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The lighting of this beacon also symbolises the end of the Jubilee celebrations taking place in Beckles. <laughs>